Hello there, Geminis. Um, this here is the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is somebody with a lot of plans, a lot of ideas. And uh, there is also a sense of optimism and idealism as you enter the month. And this is the way that other people perceive you, okay? Illusion of grandeur is something that comes up. It's the message that comes through with this card. And it's also somebody who is very, very idealistic. And they have a lot of plans. They have a lot of new things that they want to implement into their lives or to bring forth into the world. Um, the um, advice when it comes to this card overall is, you know, do the proper research. Make sure that the plans are feasible and make sure as well that you're not um, you're, you're not looking so much at the big picture and logistically make sure that all the little details are in place. Getting all your ducks in a row, getting things organized and getting things grounded in a practical manner is going to serve you well. Overall, this is uh, indicative of, you know, your attention being pulled in many, many different directions. There are a lot of things, a lot of, um, um, I feel like a lot of projects, a lot of things on your plate already. So you need to focus and triage and see what's important, what needs to be taken care of first. And you also need to um, delegate very, very well because this is pretty much, you know, hitting the ground running. Okay. Um, the second house is we have here the two of cups. And the second house deals with your finances as well as um, your value system. First of all, the Two of Cups, this is a card about, you know, seeing eye to eye with another person. And um, I feel like it's a card about compromise, okay? Um, it's a card about partnership, compromise, seeing eye to eye with another person. So as it relates to your finances, this is a card about signing contracts, things being started, things being initiated. And I feel that you're coming in very, very hopeful and very emotionally fulfilled for this month as it relates to your career and your uh, even your money, how you're making your money. So this is a card about fairness as well. Whatever the work that you put in, you're going to, going to be adequately compensated. So just make sure that you're not sleeping on the job. You're not, you know, idling or committing time theft. So whatever you put in, it's going to be returned to you in the same manner. Okay. So equal exchange of energy is what I'm, I'm feeling. Uh, as it relates to your value, learning to compromise with another person, seeing uh, things from a different viewpoint is going to be necessary and required for you. And I do feel that, you know, softening your approach a little bit, um, being a little bit more mild and being a little bit more willing to show others that you understand where they're coming from when you uh like you know if, if you have to say no for whatever reason learn to soften the blow just a little bit okay so seeing both sides of the equation that's going to be coming through very strongly for you as it relates to the values that you want to espouse for this month the third house deals with communication it also deals with siblings so let me talk about this person as a sibling first. Uh, so, you know, some of us are only children. Others of us have confusing uh, relationships with siblings. Okay. And then there are blended family, step siblings and all of that. Whoever it is that you consider your siblings, this is showing up here as a person, uh, a bringer of news. So we have here the page of wands. This is a, a younger person from you. So possibly, you know, um, somebody younger than you, a sibling that is younger than you. This is somebody with a lot of ideas. They um, usually I, I think of this as a messenger, pages or mes messenger, and they have a lot of ideas. They want to implement something out into the world. They want to um, they want to like they, it seems almost as if they have something they want to prove to the world. And I feel that um, the, the one of the things that you're going to be called upon if you're dealing with a sibling that is like this, you're going to hear messages from them. You're going to hear something and possibly they're living at a distance from you. And I do feel they have some, you know, income generating endeavors that they want you to partake in. Um, they also might need funding. They might need support for whatever reason. They might need somebody to bounce ideas off of. This is someone who's very, very adventurous. They have a habit of starting things that they can't really finish. They are very carefree, optimistic, and I feel like they might have many, many ideas. They're also very creative. I feel a, a sense of distance between you and them and i feel like for this month they're going to be coming through communicating with you heavily okay so it's a overall lighthearted, good energy and i feel a lot of optimism associated with this card as it relates to communication with the page of wands 
The Page of Wands is somebody who, once again, is very, very, um, uh, I, I want to say optimistic, carefree. And um, what you're going to start to see happening in the communication sector is a lot of people from overseas or even, you know, long distance communication coming in very, very rapidly. A lot of these things are like realistic and some of them are things that you can't possibly take care of right now. So they're pretty much telling you don't scatter your energy and be a little bit more directed as to which projects um, and which people you want to communicate with. I do see they're saying foreign tongues, foreign lands, foreign tongues. So there's a lot of communication with people like this in general. And I do see like having to do a lot of gesturing having to like, you know, um, use body language in order to convey an idea or a thought, okay? Um, communication is going to be generally very positive and very good overall for this month. And I feel that you're getting your point across in a way that um, you, you are an air sign and you're ruled by the planet um, Mercury. So overall, um, what I'm feeling here is a, a little bit more of an assertive energy is going to be required of you when you're dealing with others, okay? So it's overall very positive, though. Fourth house deals with family, the family that you grew up with, the family that you're creating for yourself or hope to create for yourself, as well as um, it deals with the mother, okay? So we have here the Page of Cups, and it's interesting because I believe the same card fell out but it fell out reverse for Aquarius. So this might be an air sign thing. Um, first of all, let me talk about the mother figure. So the page of cups, this is a person. This is an energy of a person. A lot of soulful communication and things like that. Because once again, pages are messenger. They bring an aspect of themselves when it comes to, you know, the message that they're hoping for. There's going to be a lot of healing as it per pertains to the mother. There's going to be a lot of like um, good communication coming through as well with your mother. Um, there's going to be support, mutual support, I feel, from you to them and from them to you. And there's going to be, you know, peace offering. If you have been estranged, you're going to come into contact with this woman. And she's going to be a little bit softer in her demeanor. She's going to be more agreeable, easier to, to manage and, you know, pleasant to be around. So there is a big shift here for reconciliation, for healing this relationship as well, okay? And what I also feel is um, usually I'm getting a big hit here about spiritual energies, and especially for those of you whose mother has pa have passed on, um, I do feel some divine protection, some kind of guidance, some type of blessing coming through from this person if they have passed on. Messages coming through through spiritual channels, channels that can be through dreams, that can also be through intuition, guidance, and things like that to teach you how to relate better to your own children as you, you know, if you're a woman, as you um, assume the role of the caretaker. Does that make sense? So some insights into how to handle uh, young people better, some insights to really, um, I, I guess, activate your maternal instincts in order to take care of people or to be able to sympathize with with somebody and to be able to put yourself in their shoes. So I do feel some spiritual energy that is driving you to do the right thing and to be a lot more sympathetic and to open yourself up emotionally to really understand how to help people or how to, you know, take care of your own children if you have children, okay? So you can be a male or female watching this. If you have your own children, there is spiritual energy, especially if a mother has passed away, coming through. As it relates to your household environment, I feel like there's a lot of love, there's a lot of support coming through from family. So siblings, the family that you uh, grew up with, you know, the, the people that you grew up with and the environment that you grew up with as it relates to your family. There's a lot of mutual love and support, congratulations as well, I feel, and an outpouring of love and soulful, heartfelt communication. Um, as it relates to the family that you are living in right now, I do feel that there is this person involved in your family unit. So the Page of Cups, this can be your child. This can be, um, I'm sensing, this is a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And um, I feel like they're, they're very, they're, they, they crave a lot of attention and they need a lot of love and they, they are generally very, very affectionate, okay? Um, oftentimes, this is kind of like the bringing a new pet into the household as well is what I'm feeling, bringing a new pet, adopting a new pet, um, having a new 
addition to the family as well, okay? And I feel like it might be just animals rather than real people, but um, something like that related to your household environment. So it looks really good. And I feel like it's um, you're making your home more comforting either by, um, you know, buying furniture rather than buying stylish furniture. You might opt for more comfortable pieces to decorate your home. And I feel overall, a lot of you are going to spend a lot more time at home entertaining guests rather than going out. Uh, which takes us to the next sector of your life. This is the fifth house. It deals with creativity. It also deals with children. Creativity, uh, how you entertain, and the things that you find uh, entertaining and the things that you enjoy. Okay, so this is more on the um, excitement type of um, energy. It deals with the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles in the reverse position. Um, one thing I want to advise you all is, uh, first of all, this is uh, showing up in the reverse. This deals with financial security. And they're really urging you and they're, they're trying to tell you here that um, if you are struggling financially for whatever reason, if you feel almost as if, I wish I could save up, I feel like a lot of your expenditures is going towards, you know, entertainment entertainment and you know going out and things like that so this is an area of your life if it's not taken care of i do feel that it's going to be a cause for concern further down the line and with the fifth house as the king of pentacles in the reverse it basically means you know trying to curb your spending in a way where you're, you're not like finding ways to entertain so that you're not you know running burning like a hole through your wallet so just be careful about that in terms of like social dating, the fifth house indicate, indicates creativity, fun, excitement, and things like that. Um, this is a person that you might be dealing with. You might be going out on uh, dates with, going to dinner with, entertainment, like movies and, and dining and, and dancing, and etc. And um, I feel like it's a, a person here, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And uh, this is somebody who's not financially stable. Okay, so just keep that in mind, plan dates, plan activities, or plan whatever it is in a way that it matches your pocketbook and their pocketbook. So you might be feeling very good, you might be wanting to go out, and whatever you plan might exceed the, the means that this person uh, permits for him or herself. So just something to keep in mind about. On top of that, I do see a little bit of a... I want to say like somebody who's not carrying their weight as well, you know, somebody who who is um, either not as reliable or they're just not like um, they, they might be quite extravagant without the, the financial means to back up their lifestyle. So you might be dealing with somebody like this. Um, it's not a relationship partner, I don't feel. I feel like it's just somebody you're hanging out with on a regular basis or you're doing recreational activities with. OK, it could be like a best friend, could be. Um, it's just somebody that you're dealing with in this sector of your life, going out and things like that, all right? Um, once again, the fifth house also rules children. So I feel like there might be children in your environment if you are somebody that has children, um, where they're not, they're, they're kind of like being a little bit reckless and irresponsible and they might need some financial assistance coming through from you as well. So it's just somebody a little bit reckless, a little bit extravagant, and um, I do feel... Uh, very, very stubborn as well, okay? So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Now the sixth house deals with health, work, and your daily routine. We have here the death card, which basically means a major, major, major transformation through um, this entire house as it relates to health, work, and daily routine. Your daily routine is going to change drastically. Whatever you doing, you were doing before, I feel that there's going to be, it's going to be a lot more regimented. So for example, before you might have had like, you know, dabbled around with a million things. Now you're going to need to like focus your energy, hone in and do one thing at a time or even like one long project at a time. So I feel like on the day, on the daily, day to day living, there's going to be some major, major shift. And I feel that the shift is going to going to be, be uh, better for you. Your career house is very lit up with the magician here. And I'm going to talk about that later. So I feel like maybe a lot of you are very, very busy. So you're hiring people to do services for you around the house. 
and I feel very strongly, you know, having to stay up very late to get things done as well. So your sleep habits are going to have to be routinized and your, your daily activities are going to be monitored stringently. And for some reason, I feel that you're going to be transforming as well. Your health situation, there might be a little bit of a health scare here with the death card. And um, I feel like f um, shortness of breath. I feel like heart murmurs. And I feel like fainting spells, being a little bit overwhelmed um, mentally, mentally taxed, being a little bit physically taxed as well. So I see fainting spells and things like that. So just be careful. Uh, get yourself checked up. It's the beginning of the new year. It's always good to get checked up at the beginning. That way, you know, you you know where uh, what areas need a little bit of a boost. OK, so keep that in mind as well as it relates to your work as well. A lot of you might have recently entered a new job. And I feel like, you know, because we have um, contracts being signed in the money house, there might be a new job. Um, either, you know, you're starting a new job or you are transitioning, um, waiting, like ending one job and starting another. So I feel a lot of you are going through some major, major transformations as it relates to this house. And it, it looks very positive. I, I don't feel there's anything bad. I feel like, you know, change is usually good change and overall the rest of the cards look good so I, I do feel that you know time management and somehow having a little bit more control over your daily activities that's going to be important coming into this month and as well as 2017. Now your seventh house deals with relationships uh, in love and in partnership like with work and things like that business partnerships okay so partnerships in love and partnerships in work usually this is a marriage house so we're not talking like social dating falls in the fifth house and usually fifth house 11th house um, relationships you know heavy like long-standing relationships marriages partnerships um, are usually represented by the seventh house I have the hangman in the reverse position. So whatever con conflict, whatever situation where you were kind of like not really sure how to progress, how to move forward, I do feel that you're going to be able to have some resolution to have some type of a breakthrough so that you know or understand thoroughly the state of your relationship. Okay. The hangman in the reverse is usually a situation where I feel like we're going to have to reach a state of enlightenment to understand where our partner is coming from. So if you've been having problems um, and, you know, December, I believe it was December 14th, there was a full moon in Gemini as well. Full mo moons in Gemini, uh, full moons especially, it brings up like an emotional culmination, right? And so whatever conflict, um, maybe like, you know, um, I, I almost feel like whatever conflict, whatever was the boiling point, and it's not going to apply for all, but for some of you, I feel that there is going to be some resolution. So you're no longer kind of like keeping, you're no longer stuck waiting in suspense. You're going to know how to proceed. And I feel like whatever came through is going to be bringing about, you know, a lot more harmony within your uh, relationship sector. The eighth house deals with joint finances, and it also deals with, um, well, for the, the purposes of re this reading, I'm going to focus specifically on joint finances, but it also rules, you know, the house of, um, the psychic house, sex, death, regeneration. And um, when we have here the two of wands, and the two of wands, I just want to say, like, I feel a lot of you are either romantically or uh, involved with, sexually involved with somebody at a distance. That's the first thing. I feel like you are also uh, fantasizing, thinking about somebody from a distance or communicating with them electronically. That's the, f the, the first message that came through with this card. What is also coming through as well in this house as it relates to joint finances? This is a person, um, so, you, you know, like joint finances basically means that you have financial dealings with another person. If you yourself are some completely self-sufficient, living like you're on an island, and you're not linked up with somebody else, this might not apply to you. So the first message about long-distance communication, relationship, or um, fantasizing about somebody, that's, that's going to apply to you. But if you're just, you know, uh, you have joint finances with another person, this is a relationship card. And what it means is that 
um, it's joint finances, but somebody is like making all the money. That's what I'm sensing. So it's like somebody is, um, I, I feel somebody is making all the money, but somebody else is handling all the expenses or like the, the expenditures. So I feel that, you know, in, in some ways it can work where one person is busy bringing in the money and the other person takes care of how money is practically spent. And then on the other extreme, it can be very unbalanced as well because um, one person brings in all the money, but the other person is spending as if it's joint. So I hope that makes sense. This is a, a partnership card, but it usually indicates, you know, one person bearing the responsibility of it while the other person is not around. So that's what I'm feeling here for your joint finances. Overall, it's a two of wands. It's actually a very, very good thing. Um, if you're looking into investment opportunities as it pertains to property, property management especially, um, I see travel and tourism as well. Those are good fuels for you to invest your joint finances, okay? It's it's going to pan out really well for you, real estate and things like that, okay? Now the um, ninth house deals with higher education, long distance travel as well, and um, it also deals with philosophies and, and you know, religion. Um, religion is a touchy topic, but let's talk about this. We have here the Empress. And the Empress is somebody who's very, very much in control of situation, okay? This is a card about beauty. This is a card about um, basically like in the, the reverse position, it can also indicate vanity. And um, for the sake of, you know, let, let's talk about religion here. This is basically a situation where we might be a little bit dogmatic um, based on the things that we believe in okay and that can be philosophies and that can also be religious upbringing as well and I feel like a big part of you I feel like the home environment has been very stable so you grew up in an environment where you know religious um, ideologies might have been transmitted through ma the maternal side of the family with the Empress card and what that does is that it's it's forcing you to re-examine, you know, the, the things that you really believe in and to um, try to compromise with other people based on the, the things that they believe in. So they will not believe the same things that you do. And it's really important for you to learn how to bridge the, the distance and the boundary rather than, you know, um, try to so try to bridge that that gap, try to bridge those boundaries rather than, you know, ter uh, I guess like... Um, putting a wedge in between people, okay? And it's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be a major, major challenge as well. Um, with the Empress in the reverse as well, it's um, when it comes deals with philosophies and things like that, it basically advocates for women's rights. And I'm getting this message not so much from the card, but mainly, you know, through what I'm seeing here, where I feel that, you know, this is um, wanting to promote things that might concern, you know, fertility, women's rights, and things like that. And I feel that, you know, in a religious way, this is a, it's a hot topic, actually, in the world. So this is something that you are, that's on your mind, it's going to be brought up for question as well sometime for this month, okay? Either with a debate with a co-worker or just somebody in your group of friends, but I feel like it's going to be a, an issue that is brought up for debate. Uh, what I'm also feeling here is um, as it relates to long distance travel, there are opportunities for you to do that. But I feel like on the practical front, there are a lot of responsibilities that won't allow you to do that. So you might have the money, but you might not have the time or vice versa. You might have a lot of time, but you might not have the financial resources to do that yet because the, the responsibilities are creeping in. OK, I feel a lot of you might have started a new job with this contract here. So you might be on that probationary period where you have to be there all the time. And you have to be on good terms with, you know, your supervisor or your managing director, whoever it is. So you might not be able to take that vacation so early on. Um, as it relates to higher education as well, with the Empress in the reverse position, I feel like some of you might be wanting to, um, might be wanting to, you know, um, apply for school, either graduate school, finishing up your bachelor's degree, or even doing some type of a PhD program, or even vocational school. There might be responsibilities uh, coming through from the mother, 
that might not allow you to do that just yet. So there's some blockages here when it comes to higher education, okay? And if you are doing higher education, I do see a lot of you are, are in the nursing degree, like or trying to get a nursing degree in the healthcare profession as it relates to women's health, reproductive health, or even not even just women's, but you know, reproductive health in general, okay? And um, I feel that this is going to pan out for you, but there's some blockages here, either um, having to take care of things like practical responsibilities that's really preventing you from doing this just yet. I do feel March being a really good time where it can really, the, the blockages will really lift for you. Now your career house is looking very, very good. So we're looking at the 10th house. The 10th house deals with career and the father figure. So we have here the magician, and this is such a powerful card. It's kind of like at the apex, you know, um, of your spread. So this is a really, really good card, which basically means that you have the power of persuasion, okay? Whatever you are dreaming about and you're trying to conjure up and trying to bring into the world, you're going to be able to do it successfully. You have everything at your disposal in order to bring, realize some ideas and to manifest them. So this is a really, really powerful card. I feel a lot of you are in a career where you are kind of like on center stage, all eyes are on you and they're watching you make your magic. So just make sure it's in the upright position. So I feel like, you know, this deals with like the orator, the person who has to be in the limelight the person who is uh, making these really, really important decisions and they're under a lot of scrutiny, good or bad, but I feel this is a very positive card that basically means you wield a lot of power, so use it responsibly, okay? Um, as it deals with the father figure, um, this is a very, very ambitious man. I feel that, you know, you have a father that um, can be very independent, um, might be a little bit of a bachelor, might have trouble, you know, settling down and handling, you know, the role of the father or the role of the provider or even the role of the family man. So this is a man that I, I consider the bachelor, somebody who's really hard to pin down. They have uh, many interests and it's hard for them to, to like stay in one place and be domesticated, okay? Um, so you might deal with a father figure that is like this. So overall, for your career house, I feel like a lot of you are starting something brand new where you wield a lot of power. So it might be a supervisory position. It might be like um, in a public uh, speaking forum, in a public environment. So you wield a lot of power. And I feel like money is coming through uh, based on like speaking engagement, like contracts. Um, I feel like, you know, your second house, th this is income and money. So I feel like a lot of money is coming through, through speaking engagement, through like public appearances and things like that. Um, the 10th house, so 11th house deals with friends and group associations. We're going to have to do some reassessment to see who our friends are. So don't stretch yourself too thin because I feel like um, it's quality over quantity. Now you're an air sign, you're also known as the social butterfly and I feel like you have a wide circle of friends. You and Libras very very wide um, circle of friends i feel like aquarius are a little bit more discerning with their friends and i feel like gemini's and libra's often are not so just be a little bit careful here because um what i feel here is you might have run into friends who are very very overindulgent and who are quite uh reckless and in irresponsible okay with the nine of cups here this is a card about you know um the person that has it all like they're it, it's usually indicative of overindulgence, but it's also a situation where the emotional connections are not there. So aim for friends that are a little bit more, I guess, like genuine and aim for friends that are not only interested in the veneer, but they are interested in you as a person. As it relates to group associations, you're going to have many, many offers when it comes to joining groups, when it comes to allying with other people in order to fight for a cause or to join groups in order to, you know, meet new people as well. So the options are coming in plentifully, but I feel like you don't have the time. You're stretched out too thin and you're not going to be able to do things well. So just make sure that you are a little bit more selective with friends and group associations. Okay. Aim for the, 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 the things, aim for the things and the people that really um, strike a chord with you on the emotional level. I feel like that's very important.
rather than you know playing the social butterfly and having a wide network but but like very few true friends i feel that it's important for you to narrow down your options overall the 12th house deals with um this is a, a card uh, a house that deals with secrets and institutions usually any residual karma usually falls out in this house when i do this spread and um it's also just for the purposes of this reading it's um the things that are hidden in your environment that you're not aware of and this is also a very spiritual a very psychic house as well we have here the eight of wands and the eight of wands basically means um some type of this is the arrows of love and this is communication long distance communication uh, swift fast communication and when it shows up in the reverse position it's basically telling you to um telling you that you know uh don't stretch yourself too thin and really focus on the things that actually matter so a lot of things are going to be brought up to your attention but i feel that you need to narrow down some of the things that are important to you that speak to you personally on top of that what i do feel in your environment that you're not aware of here this is kind of like saying one thing and meaning another or even like stoppage slow down in communication from overseas as well okay and um i feel like they're f urging you because this is in the 12th house they're urging you to look into this situation because i feel like it's going to be something that gets um exacerbated you know through 2017 all right so we're going to go into your love reading for uh, the second part of this and i took out the hangman in the reverse because this card rules your seventh house relationships and we're going to use that as a segue into the next reading it's going to guide the love reading uh what i'm getting while i was shuffling the cards and the messages that came through with this card here is um i feel like a lot of you are waiting on a person to come back and um i feel like if you have been waiting on them to come back waiting on them to somehow make up their mind about you know what direction they want to head on with you i feel that you're not going to be doing that anymore which is good and then for others i feel like this is a card about you know um wanting to make a peace offering with another person okay like wanting to 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 either reconcile and i feel like reconciliation is not about getting back together i feel like somebody's mad at you or upset with you and i feel like you want to say you're sorry so you were waiting you know like a lot of the times when we argue with another person um, it's usually a, a situation related to pride there's also you know wanting to get at the truth but i feel like um, two people are very proud and no one wants to open their mouths and apologize or reconcile and i feel that you there might have been something that happened i feel like the other person's upset with you and you're you were just like oh you were upset too so you're just like oh i don't need them but then i feel that you're um it might have to do with the mercury and retrograde energy like subsiding mainly because a lot of miscommunications happen during mercury and retrograde and that was prevalent throughout december of 2016 so I feel like, you know, you're 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 like biting the bullet and you're going to approach them first and you're not going to be waiting in this uncomfortable position, just waiting for things to get better. You're actually going to get your hands dirty and to do something to fix it. OK, so that's very, very positive. And then for others, I feel like there is a major change around like turnaround as it relates to your romantic life where you are um, like if you've been feeling as if. I feel like a lot of you recovered from a past relationship and now you're putting yourself out there on the dating front. So that looks really good. So these are all positive messages with the hangman in the reverse. So let me talk about the foundation because this is something that we know to be true coming into this month, okay? The foundation here, we have the seven of wands in the reverse position. The seven of wands in the reverse position is basically... A card where it's an end to conflict it's an end to ego uh, games and it's also uh, where you don't have to really you know fight for the things that you believe in anymore I feel like somebody is on board with you and they're they're agreeing to the things that you you espouse so I feel like you're not gonna have to defend your values you're not gonna have to defend your ideas and you're not gonna have to, to defend your stance anymore 
for whatever reason okay so moving into this uh month i guess you're feeling very very sure and certain and, and people are on board with you so you're not going to have to defend yourself it's linked up here with the queen of swords and the queen of swords might be another person that you're dealing with an air sign aquarius a gemini or a libra and with this air sign energy what it basically means is i feel like a lot of you are meeting a very good match because it's a fellow air sign and you both are like you, you believe in the same things so long gone are the days where you have to constantly over explain yourself because you know the other elements they don't might not understand but you're encountering a very simple uh, similar energy where someone exact knows exactly what you mean without you having to like over explain having to like um you know tell them multiple times they get it so I feel like a lot of you might be dealing with this person, okay? And it looks very, very stable if you are dealing with an air sign. I feel that, you know, they are um, a, a little bit mischievous. I feel like they're very witty, very intelligent, very sharp. They have a internal, I guess, like radar when it comes to um, sniffing out lies and, and knowing when somebody, you know, like separating fact from fiction, sniffing out lies. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who's quite sharp, quite, quite witty. Um, I feel like, you know, not traditionally beautiful, but they're beautiful in your eyes. So I feel like it's somebody with, um, who smiles a lot, who is, is, has like a little bit of a mischievous streak within them. So if you're dealing with this person, things are very, very stable and things are smooth. Uh, you might have had some type of a, um, philosophical difference between you and them in the past, but now things are good and things are stable. So what showed up in your past position here is the Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups basically means the great love, okay? This is just like um, things given to you and uh, somebody entering your life that really triggers you emotionally. So it's a very, very positive card, if, especially if it um, relates to you. some of you starting a new relationship very recently. I feel like that looks really good. It's also linked up here with the Page of Cups. And the Ace of Cups and the Page of Cups together is very, very good. What it does is that I feel like, you know, you, you don't just love the other person. You like them as a person. Like you like their friendship. You value their friendship. You value their ideas. And you, you can see yourself like having a friendship as your foundation because I feel like you get along really well. So a lot of you might be dealing with an air, uh, a water sign as well, a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. If this um, person came into your life very recently, then I feel that it looks really good. Okay, it looks very, very positive. So crowning this reading is something that you are thinking about. And we have the Four of Cups, especially for those of you who are single, a lot of options. And I feel like you're going on dates. You have many options coming through. And you're juggling two options here with the Two of Pentacles. So especially for those who are single, I feel like you're looking, you know, if, if you are single right now, which basically means you left a significant relationship, right? And I feel that past relationship that you've had, it was very, very emotionally nurturing, very emotionally fulfilling. And so the options that are presented to you, you're just like, I don't want that. I want something that is a lot more like like what I had before. Very, very deep, very, very emotionally fulfilling. So I feel like that's what you're aiming for if you were single. If you're in the single department, we do have here showing up as the magician. And the magician is in the uh, upright position. So this is basically, um, you know, the single gal, single guy. They're going out um, with their friends and there's a lot of going out. Going to really extravagant places is also what I'm feeling. Um, being in the center of attention, having a lot of suitors. And, you know, you're you're not in any hurry for those who are single. You're not in any hurry to get hitched. You're not in a hurry to, like, you know, find the one. I feel like you're going through the motions, wanting to date around, wanting to explore a little bit, and wanting to find that one relationship partner that really, you know, um, appealed to you on an emotional level like the one you had in the past. Towards the end of this month, for those of you who are doing this, I feel like somebody is going to catch your eyes, okay? Somebody's in particular. Because we have the uh, hermit card. And this is what I call like internet stalking. 
Um, this is somebody who is like looking at other people's pictures, somebody who is doing some type of digging, some type of information gathering on a specific person. And what I do sense is that if you are, you know, single and dating, there's going to be somebody that catches your eyes in towards the end of the month. And then likewise, if you're in a relationship, right, if you're in a relationship and you're kind of like eyeing somebody else, that can also show up. And I feel like for those of you who are juggling multiple people and you're supposed to be in a relationship, be very, very careful because I feel like someone is digging into your path, like looking at your pictures or, you know, um, prying. I feel like prying uh, some information about what you're doing. So just be careful about that. If you're juggling two people and you're not supposed to. What is coming through as well is um, I feel a lot of you, what's coming through in the future position. We have the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Cups is shown up in the reverse position. This is a Pisces, a Cancer or a Scorpio. And this is somebody coming into the picture who wants to date socially. And I feel like uh, if it's a, you know, like they, they have many, 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 many suitors. They're going on many, many, many dates. And I feel like this is somebody that's going to catch your attention towards the end of the month for those of you who are single and dating. And I feel like you're going to be very swept away by this person. And you're going to do a lot of, um, I see a lot of like running obsessive thoughts about this person. And, you know, this is a, a typical Gemini thing too. I feel that you fall in love very easily, like you get swept off your feet very easily. And once you like somebody, you really, really um, dig up information as well. So I feel that coming through towards the end of the month. And then likewise, I feel like if you were involved right now with a, um, with a water sign, okay, if you are involved with a water sign right now, and you have been kind of like having doubts or having like suspicious thoughts, you're going to come to light some information is going to come to light. You're going to stumble upon some information about some um, indiscretion, okay, that they, they are dealing with. And I don't usually enjoy saying that, but I feel it very strongly with this uh, spread, where if you are dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, and you have had suspicions, and you have looked into their either their phone, their, their computers, or and things like that, you're going to stumble, stumble upon something. And if not already, um, if it hasn't happened already last month around that whole Gemini full moon uh, on the 14th of December, it's going to happen sometime for this month. Okay. That's with somebody that you have already done the, the research on. Okay. So I hope the reading has been helpful. Gemini's, um, keep yourself grounded for this month. Focus on work, focus on the practical responsibilities. Okay. Um, for those who are dating, I feel like you're you're not interested in getting into a new relationship just yet. And then for others, I feel a lot of very good communication, very good rapport here with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Um, I do wish you all the best and take care of yourself. And best of luck with everything. Take care of yourself. Your career house looks very amazing. So take care. Bye-bye.